we start our briefing and today we will talk about cooperation between Georgia and Ukraine in raising a new generation of politicians and diplomats. I invite here Khatia Dekonoidze, who is former Minister of Education and Science of Georgia, Georgia and Georgi Zubko, Associate Professor, Lecturer of the Administrative Law uh, Department of Taras Shevchenko National University. Uh, good afternoon. It is a great honor for me to present uh, our school, our new idea. I'm Khatia Dukanidze. I was a Minister of Education and Science of Georgia. I also worked in the Interior Ministry of Georgia. I was a rector of the Police Academy, so all the reforms that we had went through me, myself, and my colleagues. Today, with Georgi, who is my very close friend and co-worker, we'll talk about the school. We call it CAPS, the School of uh, Social and Civil and Political School. This is an educational program that will a home for a new generation of Ukraine, for new leaders, for those who badly need Western-style education system. And we are launching a project, the project from the 1st of February. We have our site, capschool.ua. You can register there, caps.com.ua. UA, and uh, there is no limitation on the age of students. The course will last for two months. The lecturers will be from Georgia. Those people who were engaged in uh, effecting reforms, former ministers of uh, foreign affairs, deputy minister of uh, foreign affairs, the former minister of justice, also those people who were building the entire education system and the entire system of new law enforcement bodies in Georgia. So the system of education will be Western style. And all those people who will successfully pass the interview will get grants, scholarships, from our school. So this is uh, briefly about the school. Georgi will tell you more. If you have any questions, then uh, you're welcome. The questions will be after the briefing. So Mr. Zubko. Good afternoon. I'm Georgi Zubko. What I would like to start with in Ukraine, regrettably, over the last 20 years, the word politician became a uh, common name. The society does not trust law enforcement bodies and does not respect politicians as well. Although in healthy democratic countries, the situation is different. The idea of creating a joint school is on the surface, the society demands a qualitatively new politicum. When we got to know that our Georgian friends and colleagues said they were prepared to take part in this school and share their experience, we have not given it another thought. Our school is launched on the first of uh, February, and there will be 40 people enrolled. It doesn't have any time limits. It will work as long as it is needed. Every lecturer there is a person who knows precisely the specifics of their work and who have already successfully applied their skills in their country, and they are now prepared to share this with us. Recently, in an, in an interview, Boris Loshkin, the head of the presidential administration, said that in the process of hiring new people for the state uh, offices, 
HR specialists saw two categories of people, former corruption, corrupted politicians who are again want to take offices and public activists who unfortunately don't have necessary experience or skills to build a qualitatively new state. Our students are, of course, the second category from which we want to make a third category. So if our students will manage to get the necessary experience and knowledge in the school, then they will have to take along the desire to change the country. We want to conduct a huge selection. Today we had a presentation of our school, and so we now have 100 applications for the first year of studies. It is very important for us that our students are sincere because our lecturers will deliver the knowledge that we would like our students to direct to the a goal of developing their country and graduates from our schools a school have to become a basis for a new social political movement and we believe that we will manage to do this thank you Thank you, Georgi. I would like to add, uh, quite often my Ukrainian colleagues uh, ask me why Georgia is so successful in reform, why you have this success story. And uh, is it possible to copy this experience and to copy the reforms? which you had in Georgia. You cannot do just copy-paste. It's impossible. Um, I think what is important that those people who um, implemented reforms in Georgia, they may share experience and this might be useful for Ukraine. I recollect that time when uh, I was sitting in front of TV and watching um, a story from Why Am I Done? And I was, uh, I, I remember how I was thinking, these people with uh, bare hands, uh, they are fighting for freedom and for new civilization. And uh, mm, now I believe that those people who will graduate from our school, um, they will build up uh, new Ukraine. I was only 24 years old when I uh, first came to the um, civil service in Georgia, and we were criticized a lot at that time um, that we were too young and too inexperienced, but uh, we um, were uh, Heartful, and uh, we uh, uh, we we had a strong will to change the country. During my lectures delivered in the universities, I saw young people who were very much involved, very much interested, and. Uh, uh, the questions showed me that they are they have a big potential and. Uh, uh, I think your major task should be find those people who, who are inspired, who are um, uh, ready to change the country. Uh, we are launching our school in, on February 2nd, uh, because February 1st, this is Sunday. So um, we will start lectures on February 2nd, and I believe that those lecturers who will arrive from all over the world, their experience will be useful for you. I would like uh, to answer in advance the question why we have chosen Georgia. Uh, both our countries uh, missed first chance immediately after collapse of the Soviet Union when uh, the economy was working and uh, when all the enterprises were healthy and working. We missed that chance, uh, unlike Poles, the Czechs, and uh, many other European nations. Uh, and later on, uh, both Georgia and Ukraine faced this economic 
economic problems. Uh, part of Georgia is also under occupation of the aggressor, just like we have today in Ukraine. And um, nevertheless, you cannot just do copy-paste operation. Uh, and uh, when opponents of reforms say that um, Georgia is small, Ukraine is big. While during reforms in Georgia, many people said, you know, the, the U.S., which uh, ex whose experience you want to use, the USA is big while Georgia is small. Mm. I believe that size of the country is an important. Most important is that these people are eager to share this experience. And uh, for us, it is important uh, um, that our students uh, uh, would be just as eager to take this experience as lecturers are eager to share it. Mm, uh, uh, my question. Uh, is as follows, whether you are involved in uh, assistance, uh, consultancy to our new government uh, uh, in the area of education, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I definitely know that some of my colleagues uh, uh, provide uh, advice and assistance to Ukrainian um, government. You have Alexander Kvitashvili, and uh, uh, his advisor was his uh, for, for, uh, my friend, Aka, who uh, used to be deputy minister at that time. And uh, uh, I believe she will be able to provide good advice about reform of the law enforcement sector. Mm. Uh, today, I met uh, with the Minister of Education of Ukraine, and uh, uh, he is a very uh, interesting uh, personality. And what is more important, he realizes that without curbing corruption in education, um, he would be unable to do nothing. Uh, long ago in Georgia, we had just flourishing corruption, the same flourishing corruption as you have in Ukraine. Um, uh, quite often, uh, I'm asked the same question. You dismissed uh, uh, traffic inspection. You fired uh, around 20,000. Uh, policemen, and uh, um, wasn't it painful for the country and for that people? Yes, surely it was painful, but uh, this was for the good of the country, uh, and people believed that it was uh, for, for the best. Uh, uh, that is, the first step is uh, to believe this, this is for the best, and uh, start doing something, believing that uh, we will manage to succeed. Our school, our CAPS course, is about sharing experience, sharing Georgian experience. We will bring those reformers uh, who uh, uh, who made reforms in Georgia with their hands. And uh, we have many partners. I uh, I am sure that uh, this cooperation will be successful. I'm Levan um, from NGO, Georgians of Maidan. Under your uh, um, post uh, period of uh, in uh, the post in Georgia, there was a problem of uh, uh, my. Uh, Brain drain in Georgia. How did yeah, how you managed to uh, overcome this problem? Oh, today we talked to, to the minister about this, and of course, brain drain is a problem not only for Ukraine or Georgia, but also for England after the Second World War. You know, practically, when the reforms. When we started to implement reforms, when we reformed the state structures like police where the salary has grown 
For instance, a patrolman had a salary of around $800. All the young people who were thinking to live about live in Georgia, they came back to the country and they started to work in state structures. And there was a survey, I'll tell you a story. In Kutaisi, this is a city in western Georgia, and uh, before the reform, they had uh, surveyed, polled uh, school children what their dream profession was, and everybody said that they wanted to be uh, criminals, high-ranking criminals, because they uh, had cars and money before the reforms. However, after the police reform in Georgia, we again polled uh, Georgian school children in Kutaisi. 80% said that they dreamt about becoming policemen. Brain drain was there, of course, of course, but at the initiative of President Saakashvili, a presidential foundation was founded, which uh, worked very effectively. And the young people who wanted to learn to study abroad but didn't have money, the foundation paid for them. And they were studying at Yale, Oxford, Harvard, and Cambridge, but in their contracts, they had a stipulation that they would come back to Georgia. And, uh, you know, even without this foundation, which worked very well in our time, something like 70% or even more of young people came back to Georgia. Why? Because they had a chance, because they had a prospect of uh, starting a good job or finding a good job with a good salary and every young person you know i'm teaching now at the university and i am a dean of a department when i deliver lectures i see that they everybody knows that nothing will happen without good education you probably remember old times buying your diplomas. It was very fashionable, a diploma of a doctor, of a lawyer. There's no such mentality in Georgia at the moment. I can tell you when I'm here, I can sincerely tell you that we have broken the spinal corruption in the education system, not only in education, but also in police, in economy, everywhere. So the main thing is that for young people to believe that they can work here, that they can build a state here in Ukraine with their own hands, if there's heart, if there's a spark, this can be done immediately, at once. Any other questions, colleagues? Hatia, so touching was your speech. It does ignite a spark. It makes us believe that we will manage to do this in Ukraine, at least effectively work. But what uh, concerns the project that you are presenting today, what is the budget and who will pay for the scholarships? Thank you for your question. First of all, I'll tell you that, of course, you'll manage, you will cope. I believe that the Ukrainian miracle will happen very soon. There was a lot of skepticism about Georgia. Everybody was saying this won't happen. But now Georgia is well known not only for wine and hachapuri, but uh, because this is a tiny, tiny country with a huge success story. As for our project, this is a uh, educational, not commercial project. We have a lot of partners. We are still talking with private sector and with the state sector. And we will have a grant system after the interview and after the lecture. 
because, you know, there won't be just theory, there will be practice and homework. We will finance those people, young people, who will be leaders in, the, in a group. And what's the budget of the project? And where do we take the money? You know, we are still thinking about the prices, but we think that the project will be within the amount of $100,000 for the entire system of education. And I'll repeat that the grant system, a scholarship, as they call it in Western countries, we will have a large-scale scholarship problem. Program. Any other questions, colleagues? Thank you for this beautiful presentation, and I hope that soon we will see you in our center, and you will probably talk about new projects and about the results of this project. Thank you very much. It, I was honored to be here. Goodbye.